Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about MiniCloud and that is a software from the Ubuntu folks and it's built on snaps and a lot of different technology that is already out there. They have just packaged it in a different way. So they are using their LXD client for different containers, they are using Ceph for their storage, they are using OVN for their networking and so on. So there is already a bunch of components here, but it's pretty much a small cloud that could grow very large. I think they talked about installations around 50 machines or so, which is a decent amount of machines in a cloud. Um, so let's uh, switch over to my screen here. And I have now created three clean um, um, clean machines here. So these are virtual machines. Uh, one thing to keep in mind here is that I have two network interfaces to these machines. One that they talk to internally and one that could go externally. And the one that goes externally should either be a bridged interface or don't have any IP address to it. So it's important that it doesn't have anything connected to it, but it still needs to be up. And we're gonna put it up later on. If you have a machine, your interface will be up probably, but in this case, when I'm running virtual machines, they are down, so I need to put them up. But we will start this process by running apt update up and full upgrade. Uh, and all of these commands I will run as root because some of the commands in the uh, in the um, package here doesn't work well with without root. They are uh, um, calling uh, commands outside of the script, and those some of those require root. So let's do everything with root. So this should be a one-liner to get up and running. It of course isn't there a one-liner. I had to figure out a bunch of different things. But first off, I will upgrade my systems. I have the latest software on my Ubuntu here. Um, so even though this is a newly installed one, there is still a couple of packages that are not up to date. And we are back. And now I have updated all the servers. And because it's distributed over snaps, I need to update the snap repository as well. So you run snap refresh to get the latest packages there. This version I run here is the Ubuntu 2204 uh, server, which is a long-term supported release. So it should be the right version for this particular uh, install. Uh, and everything in the snap repository should be available to me. So now the snaps are updated and we can see here that it has refreshed core 20, uh, LXD and snapd. And the problematic part here is that LXD is something that we want to use, but for some odd reason, the networking doesn't work if LXD is installed first because LXD will not figure out that you want to use micro OVN for your networking if it's installed before that. So we need to remove LXD first. So I will run through that and remove it from the system. And after the LXD has been removed, we can install the micro cloud packages. So we want to install micro Ceph, micro OVN and micro cloud. So I will install all of those packages on the system. And now I have installed that. So now I can install the LDX service again. So I will install that after. And the same goes for the other two machines. And it should be a snap install. And after LDX is installed, I also need to bring up that interface that I was talking about earlier. Um, so the network interface that is not currently used. So if we look at my IP address show here, I have one interface that is the low interface. I have one ENP0 
S3, which is the broadcast interface that I'm using now, uh, IP45. And then I have this P0S8, which I want to bring up. So I have another interface up. So I will bring that up on all these servers. So all of them have this interface up and running. Now that that is done, I've prepared the services, I've installed all the packages and so on. I can run microcloud init on one of the servers. It will wait for LXD to start, but it is already started. Then it will ask me for which interface I want to use to reach the other machines. So do you want to use the, uh, you do a search on this interface over uh, 645. And I know that the other one is on the same network, so I will do a search there. It will scan for eligible uh, servers. And here I can either use space to add them or press right to select all of them. So now I will select all of these machines and I will add those into the, my cloud here. So now I've selected three machines to work on. Next up, it will ask me about storage. All of these machines has one extra drive in it. And I have been playing around trying to get remote storage, uh, which is the same as Ceph to work, but hasn't worked at all for me in this version. So currently that is broken. But local storage should work fine. So I choose yes there, and then I can choose the three machine disk I have here. And these disks are on different hosts. So yeah, these disks are not on this specific host. It's on one of the hosts in this uh, network. And I say that I want to wipe all of them. So you can select here which of the drives to wipe. They should be uh, empty, but I will wipe them anyway. Distributor storage, sadly doesn't work at the moment, so I will skip that. If I run that with the distributor storage, it will say error, failed, adding new disk, JSON, can't unmarshal string into a ghostruct field disk post path uh, of type string which is probably something wrong written in either the JSON or the handling um, in between. Could be how my disks are named or something like that that doesn't, isn't, um, probably isn't escaped correctly in, in the sequence or something like that. But uh, I run this and I want to have distributed networking. If I didn't have an extra uh, interface up here with an empty, which, which didn't have an IP um, assigned to it, it would not ask me this question. It just would say, didn't find any extra interface and then continued. And the problematic part is that if you get anything of this wrong and you want to exit out, you can't start it up already because it had already, start, uh, it already saved a bunch of configuration. So my, the easiest way was just to do a clean install again. And I worked from a snapshot in order to make it fast. There could probably be a bunch of configuration files somewhere that you could remove. But keep that in mind that you need to know what, uh, in which order you want to do this. Or use the manual uh, install uh, of this instead. So we will configure networking. I will use that interface, this physical interface on all the machines. And here I want to uh, specify the gateway. So this is the gateway of that network. And also an IP range here. So I will take from 200 uh, to uh, 220. Doesn't really matter because it will reach outside of that range as well if I create a machine for some reason. But, and I don't want any IP6. So now it will set up my micro cloud, it will, uh, get LXD up and running ready. It will configure the OVN networks and it will also configure Ceph and it doesn't crash now that we don't haven't assigned any extra drives. Uh, it will make the other uh, host join into my network. That could take a little while as well. But in in I think all the inputs are now put in and you should just wait for the cluster to be ready. Now my micro cloud is ready to use. So let's switch over here and go to the address uh, of this machine, port 
8443 and it should be uh, HTTPS and when you go to this address and uh, accept the uh, certificate here you get to this page and this is not that useful so <laughs> you actually need to go run a couple of more commands so let's go back to my console here and run snap set lxd ui enabled equals to true and after we've done that we will reload our lxd so restart that service and if we go back here and reload now we have an interface that we can actually use here we need to create a new certificate and we will generate one of those and give it a password uh, just a simple query in this case okay the password didn't match let's do that and then you get two files so here I want to download these two files and uh, not sure if I have anything in my download directory so let's go in here uh, yeah, I had a couple of uh, those already, so I uh, remove those and I will download CRT and I will download PFX. And after I've done that, you have instructions on what to do here. And in my case, I need to uh, SFP this LXD uh, um, search to first off my client, which is the, the machine I'm working with here. And that client in turn have access to the uh, mini cloud so uh, i will need to ssp those again into uh, let's see uh, 45 uh, cert into mini cloud one so i will move it in there and then i can follow these instructions here so i will configure this and add that trust domain so add lxd Okay, home, wooden, LXD, because it was there we were happening. So now I've added that to this mini cloud. And then I also need to add it to my Chrome browser. So I've downloaded it here. I have this uh, instruction here to go to the Chrome certificate page here. And I had already one of these installed. So I will remove that from previous runs. And I will go to my downloads directory and find that pfx file and i will get that in enter the password again because it's packaged with the password and now when i come back here i say that i will use that and i'm into the system so now i can start using lxd and in here you have a bunch of different things you have this kind of project where you can set up different requirements for different people you can have a lot of different configuration for who's logged in and so on um, you can have profiles which gives you some default parameters you have the networks for your system here and here we have the default network over OVN so here all the different machines that we install will be put and then we have this uplink for the physical network if we want to go out. So it needs to have one of those uplinks as well. Storage. Currently we only have the local storage here. And each machine uh, has its own uh, little place for that. Um, so we can have backups in on either server. And we can also download custom uh, images here. Uh, we don't see any images here because we haven't used any at, at the moment. But I want, want to start giving me, myself some defaults here. So I will create a test profile here. And it should have devices. So I want to use the local storage for that. And when it comes to network, I want to use the uplink network. And I will give it the name of e ATC0. And that is because most of the images I install will put that up and give it... Um, access to the network over DHCP uh, which is good because then I can have access to it from the outside so let's create that profile and now I can create an instance let's create a test instance here I will uh, select uh, a browse an image 
let's take an Ubuntu version. So let's do a 24.204 and uh, Yami version here. And I want to use my test profile down here. I could select a specific member, but I say install it on any of them. Uh, now I don't need to change anything here. The network and everything should be set up correctly. So I can just create and start. Then we get this uh, little servers here running and it will download the image, unpack it and install it. So now we have it up and running. So in this container, if you go into it, we can see that it has not used that much memory and it have not used that much disk either. Uh, we could configure it more here. We could uh, create a snapshot on it. We have a terminal where we just can go in and edit things. We also see the console. So this is the full console of the machine. And we also have some uh, LXD logs. But if I go into the terminal here, I will install, uh, I can run apt update. And then I will install an Apache just to see that I can actually reach this server. Because the server should have uh, gotten, a, uh, if I don't, get gotten an IP, I think. Install Apache 2, let's see. So now that is up and running, I will leave that page. Let's see uh, here. Yeah, it has gotten the IP of 48. So this is not something that is used already. So if I go to IP 48, I can see my uh, web server endpoint here. And this is a default page. So it works to get outside of this machine as well. So now I can set up a test cluster, run this on native hardware and have an easy access to create either instances or virtual machines in their micro cloud. Uh, sadly, when it's set up at the moment, as it is set up at the moment, it is running on a particular host. So in this case, it's running on mini cloud. So I can't easily go in under instances here and say, move this somewhere else. Uh, because it's on a particular host. If it were located in Ceph, for instance, you could just say, move it to this host and start running it there instead. And it will just be a pointer to that uh, container in my Ceph storage. Moving it now needs actually to be copied over to the new location and so on. Uh, I really wanted to get Ceph working, so I've been working around the clock to actually get that up and running but everything I've tried so far just crashes with this uh, error so hopefully they will have fixed that in a later version and escape the uh, information in a better way. So this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.